Then he reminds him, he gives him a little history lesson that he would be familiar with. He says, just as Moses, remember Moses and Nicodemus? Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. You guys remember that story? Because of, uh, of the people's faithlessness, God sends those fiery serpents in the midst of the camp. And when they're bitten, some die and some are getting really sick. And they're beginning to all of a sudden say, oh Lord, help us. We're dying off here. Do something about it. So Moses prays to God and God says, tell you what you do here, Moses. I want you to fas fashion a snake made of bronze. And I want you to put it on a pole, attached to a pole, and I want you to hold it up. And you tell the people that everybody who looks on this snake on the pole, they will live. Now he uses that as one way to help Nicodemus make a connection with him. He tells him of how he is going to die and he is also giving him a little bit of a clue and saying, you're going to be a part of my death, Nicodemus. You're going to be right in there with the ones who will condemn me. If you can't understand earthly things, how are you going to understand the things of God? But as Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man, me, Nicodemus, must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Nicodemus, do you believe in me? But Jesus isn't finished, is he? Here's where we come to that wonderful uh, verse and verses that we have come to know and to cherish. For God so loved the world. God doesn't hate the world. God didn't give you the law because he hated it or because he think that uh, everything has to be under his thumb. He loved the world. And he went one further than the law. He expressed and came to the epitome of what the law is saying. That's the fulfillment of it in his only son. And notice it is emphatic, only son. Not one among other sons, but the son, the only son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Nicodemus. Do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you believe that God loves the world, doesn't hate it? God is not out there ready to whack people upside the head when they don't keep the law perfectly? No, God loves. He's shown it. He will demonstrate it through me, Nicodemus. And then in verse 17, which a lot of times we leave out. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't do that. What God was interested in in sending Jesus was to redeem his world, to redeem his people, to buy them back from out of the bondage of sin and death. It says, in order that the world might be saved through him. Zeroing in on that which is essential. Faith. Faith. And faith to go one step further. To be a disciple. To have the privilege of being a part of, the, of a family of God. Baptized into Christ Jesus. Remember what Paul talks about in baptism? The old has been set aside, huh? It's like taking dirty clothes. Some of you guys understand. They've been out working in the yard and you had your grungies on. Well, you don't want to go out for a nice dinner wearing that stuff. So you change to some nice clothes. In a way, Jesus is saying, what I have done is I have taken that filthy bunch of uh, clothing and I've undressed you. But I don't leave you running around naked. I clothe you with myself, with my righteousness, with my love. I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here so that you can have life. I want you to live. And not just live here, but live with me forever. He said that to Nicodemus. He's saying that to you and me. If we haven't taken, if you haven't taken that one 
step further into discipleship, you are invited by Jesus to do so. Jesus says, think about this very seriously, just like Nicodemus, inviting him, inviting us into that saving relationship that you'll have life eternal because Jesus is here that we might embrace him, believe in him, trust him so that we can have life. And when we have life, it's the result of the forgiveness of our sins for Jesus' sake. That's what he did on the cross. He takes our filthy clothes, our rags, and gives us new so that we can stand even as sinners before God's throne and we are seen as righteous because we are covered with the clothing of Jesus, his blood, redeemed, bought back, claimed, and reclaimed, and reclaimed, and reclaimed. And so the invitation is always to you and to me, come, trust, follow, do. And when that takes place, you will have joy and eternal life because that's the reason that Jesus came. He came for Nicodemus. Don't be like him and stand just constantly in confusion or not understanding, not maybe trying to understand, just trying to be, but go that further step and let Jesus transform you into one who follows and does as Jesus does. Because he came for you to save you from your sins, that you might have joy and completeness in him. Amen.